obviously one thing that's really important to us is that we play with relentless effort um, and with great uh, with great toughness and with great detail all those you know toughness detail those are our, you know part of our core values um, and you can't play with relentless effort without being in great shape you can't play with great detail without being in great shape you can't um, you can't have population to the football on defense um, where they're constantly running to the football without being in great shape hey y'all today of course uh, it's matt rogers on the honorable mention podcast it's a philly sports podcast we got chris franklin on today uh back where we left off uh before the dead season i i didn't want to bring you guys and waste y'all's tie with some of the silly narratives so it's like a little break we're back and uh, it's going to be a lot of content this year of course chris franklin's one of the one of the best in the business always you can hear his voice see him all around all the time eagles just started hitting and uh this week had their longest potential practice of the Sirianni era. It was about 105 minutes. Is that was that actually is that actually correct, Chris? See, I don't like to time them. I, I'm not one of those guys that times them and like stopwatches them. I just go by like they, they usually have. They usually go by like stopwatches. They, like like a stop sign. They have a red a red day, which is like okay, walk through, get in, get out. Yellow day. They like to do a little bit extra, but it's like a thing in Green Day, which means they're a full go. So mm-hmm. their Green Days have definitely got a little bit longer on top of that. And when you look at it, I think it's a lot has to do a lot of conditioning because it, as much as the players are doing and talking about it, as much as you see these big office alignment who are usually typically on any team, they're the ones that shy away from conditioning the most. Like you ever run gasters and everything else? Oh, oh nah. They, they're the ones that are on the field now initiating and doing themselves. And it's, it's a change. <laughs> Quite frankly, it's, it's definitely a change. And they're trying everything they can to make sure they don't have a repeat of like a, the collapse. Now, that what to me, that wasn't the primary reason. No. He may have played a role, though. He may have played a role. So you think that that's a – is it a philosophical shift, or is that just like that dog, as folks like to say – is that that coming out that that people just feel like, hey, we got to steer the ship in another direction? There ain't, there's no way in hell what happened last season. Is, is that kind of what you would attribute it to? I think it's a little bit of both. I, 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 you'll still see, like, when you look at the way that the practices are run in terms, there's only the only little nuances are they sometimes run the first team runs a play, then they have them run off, and the second team. Offense run on, they run off. Third team offense play, runs a play, they run off and try to cycle to get more running in that type of ass in ty- that type of way. Or say when the first team has done their set of plays and a 7 7 or 11 11, they all run to the end zone and then to the sideline. They're just trying to get as much more. They're trying, it's like they're trying to still be efficient and still keep most of the structure they had the previously because they did start out in both years. They have started out well. They have started out well when it comes to that, but they just look like they're trying to add on that extra conditioning in terms of that as well to basically to make them fresher and try to help the mental awareness when they're tired and trying to think about their assignments and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, Nick said, and and on the last episode, I kind of cut in some of those conversations. One of the funny things he said, he was asking you, you you're going to get two questions or one. I thought that was pretty oh, funny. Yeah. <laughs> <And he> was, <laughs> he was saying during that quote, I believe, he was saying that he told the guys to come back in the best shape of their careers because to play with great detail, which is one of the team's you know mottos, is you have to be in great shape to play with great detail. You can't be gassed and then play with great detail. Yeah, that's truly really true because when you look at it, you think of fourth quarters, how many times have you seen the mental mistakes of breakdown in coverage, mm-hmm. the inopportune false starts, the inopportune offsides calls, encroachment penalties. You see all that, that's all a product when you're tired. When you're and when you get used to that, when you're doing your conditioning and you're able to be in that good of a shape that you're still in the field you're still flying around fresh not only do you think physically okay you can do still your job mentally you think about you still remember what you have to do i think that goes hand in hand and that's what they're trying to accomplish so far during this early part of camp you you talk about you know i was going to ask you this later uh, in the show but it seems like a good time to, to fit this in i mean you talk about players being in shape, coming in in great shape. I mean, you look at the photos, you look at the, the videos, guys are looking like they did. They listened to Sirianni. 
when you talk about being in shape, one of those question marks was Makai Becton coming in because he, you know, has had the reputation of somebody who doesn't, you know, isn't, isn't uh, on the cutting edge of that, let's just say. So is he looking like, is he fitting in from that perspective from what you've seen, or is he getting more ingratiated in, into that kind of mentality now as a bird? He looks like he's got some buy, buy into it. And I know a lot of people were making a lot of the whole fact that he threw up on the first days. And That's, it was fine. That's great. Yeah, he, no, he, he was up, like, he was kind of upset. Like I throw up the first day, first practice of every game and it's still been all right. So I don't know why you guys get in. And it's like, oh, okay, it's football. Yeah, right, That's why I came <laughs> up with Donovan. I'm like, fine. Like I've given him my all at basketball practice. I've, on the and I didn't make it to the trash can before. Like folks, like <laughs> have you been involved in athletics and give and give and, and emptied out the tank before? Especially at a damn training camp. <laughs> I, I feel like I want to like I want his nickname to be Willie Beeman. I really feel that way. Next thing you know, you see the trash can. All right, cool. Oh, well, okay. We know he's gonna be good from here on out now. So yeah. But it, mm-hmm. it hasn't affected him to a point where it's I think it started to slow the play. I think if anything is still trying to learn the position. There's still little nuances he's trying to learn that position. He's getting a lot of opportunities to play those guard positions because Landon Dickerson had that last rig and toe that he's been dealing with. And also now you have Tyler Steen, who's going down with, with his ankle injury as well, too. So he's getting plenty of opportunities to do that. And the way that he's playing his athletic, especially his, his size and athletic ability, he's going to be the first offensive lineman. It just feels like he's going to be the first offensive lineman to come off the bench, whether it's mm-hmm. tackle or guard. He's just – he offers that much and be able to help out in that in, in that way. So I'm thinking when I look at it, it's like he's he's working out. You see him working. He's not shying away. He's working with the whole team. Like when I say the whole, the whole team is doing offensive lines doing gassers, yeah. Landon Dickerson and Jordan Mailata has them out there forcing and initiating it, and they're running back and forth as well too. And not just during practice, after practice. They're all like, oh, you see these massive 60s, 70s, and mm-hmm. 60s and 70s going back and 50s, some 50s going back and forth. Mm-hmm. We're gonna to talk to them soon, but now they're taking time to actually doing the the, the uh to, to that uh, conditioning. So yeah, he's that was a good signing, I think, over in the long term. Absolutely, Even for one I year, like you get to see him up close, and mm-hmm. if it sticks, you sign him to a two year deal, and maybe he's your heir apparent to Lane Johnson. And with the with the Eagles, what I really do like, and even as a, just a fan of sports, I like the way how he does it. How he, of course, Mister Lurie, um, they'll know in like ne- November. If, if, if they're going to, you know, with Becton, they kind of it, it seems like they carry themselves in a, in a way that if he if he's if he's cooking, they're not going to let him play it all the way out and, and potentially, you know, have him test free agency or or let him get hurt and not have that security. They'll you'll do that. They'll do that two year, you know, for the trade deadline and, and lock him up if he's playing well. And that goes also not only how it goes to your pro scouts as well, too, because a lot of times I think if anything, which I'm actually. I'm actually kind of glad that the series came out because I thought it was a question. I didn't think somebody would actually do it, but the hard knocks off season, you get to see like a lot more how some of these front offices work. And especially when it comes to the role of the pro scout, it's not just to say, okay, well, they're coming in. What, what snaps runs they run? What this player would like to do with like the gap stuff. They actually look at the way they're playing as well too. They get a detailed list. And from the way that they probably saw Makai Beckton and his current situation there and hearing that stuff, because let's face it, as much as they say, they, they never listen to us. Yeah, you know, all the every team has like a their own OSINT type deal where they look and they have mm-hmm. reports coming out in their own stuff as well too. So, yeah, they did probably he probably was on the radio like you know if we ever get a chance and I think he fits in, why not go for it? And all that intelligence Absolutely. they built up, it, it helps out. Absolutely. Well, he's a he's a he's an athletic freak. It, he's a, he's he's like an offensive. I would say for for folks who you know aren't aren't all deep into the weeds on these random you know first round picks from four years ago type of players like you know if you like Chris and I, I would say he's an athletic freak. You flip positions with like a Jordan Davis. I would say you know the, your conditioning and and technique is all that's keeping him from being. An all-world type of guy. I mean, and, and just scary. from what I've seen. Yeah, that's the only thing. It's, and the biggest things that you heard coming out of it was he fought the whole thing of playing guard when the Jets wanted to play go- him to play guard. He's fought it, and when he comes here, he said like, "Yeah, it's the way you talk. You talk to people and and and, and interact with people. All of a sudden now, he's got no problem playing guard at all with Stell. It's one of those type of things to the point now 
we get so excited, like offensively, if you look at schematically and you're looking at the way the same team, you could run to the left, which is the side the Eagles have the most success running the ball. Absolutely. You have Landon Dickerson and Jordan Mylana. And oh yeah, if you decide to pull the guard, my guy Beckton coming mm. around the outside with that one. And oh yeah, Saquon Barkley trying to get a hole from there. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, that's over a half a ton of 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 a man coming that's out. That is not fair. It's like, a, it's it, like a it's vehicle. Like, it's not right. Like also, like, if, if also you want to go, if, if they want to, especially if you run to the weak side where you just have a cornerback that's going to have to make some business decisions. You got a line, oh, a safety yeah. trying to make a business but decision. Right out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my foot slipped. I slipped. I didn't see. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my god. Ah. I get oh, you next dude. time, stay quad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like, there's so many opportunities with that, that he provides, but you just you hope he's consistent, you hope he stays healthy, and you hope he still buy, continues to buy in. And so far, he's done all three of those things. I, I yeah, I expected before the move into another topic. I expected as we were coming into the season. I mean, people don't like to talk about it. And Jalen Hurts is a you know he's an understated individual, so he. But from what I've seen, I've seen Jalen Hurts play football before. And last season, he was battling something. I thought coming into this season that he's just going to have another 2020, uh, 2022 type of season where he takes another jump uh, and, and he just gets back into the lab and really work works on these things. So I expected a, a jump. What I've seen in the reports from training camp uh, look like he, he's been playing pretty well. What grade would... If so far, what letter grade would you give Jalen Hurts camp? Not him as a player, how he's performed in camp so far through six six practices, right? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, five. I give him okay. B plus. I give him B plus. Okay, B plus. Okay. Because the way I look at it, and, and, and what I liked the most, especially I had questions going in. I wanted to know how fast could he adapt to the system that mm -hmm. he he. Because he tried some things during minicamp and OTAs, and the offense it wasn't as sharp as it could have been at all. And now you look at him now in a training camp, and the extra time he was working with those receivers starting to pay off because the you look the way I can tell a quarterback is really confident in the system and the way he's doing is his anticipation, is his ability to be accurate, and his control, ability to control his feet and to slow down. Because I think when you look at that, the anticipation shows – you know the route combination and you feel comfortable enough to get to know where you're going to go and throw it quickly to give your receiver a way to throw right. You're accurate enough to get the ball in the right placement. And when you're throwing the ball, you feel comfortable enough that you know where you're going. You don't have the happy feet, so you're not going to be inaccurate or feel like that. Has he had to run out a couple of times for the scramble? Yeah, that ability is still going to be there. And he's done it. They, they decided when to do it and how to do it. And he's still – the design runs are still in there as well too, dudes. Have so to far in camp, they 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 have not been shy. Moore has not been shy calling running blade with them involved in and this whole things. So I look at all the three things. And I think so far he's been doing a really good job in terms of that. I want to see what happens when he gets to go against the Patriots and he goes against the, the in a regular season. I don't, I don't think they played him if if they play a, a, a snap, a, even a snap against the Vikings that final one. But I can't wait to see what he does with Packers. I guess the defenses he's not hasn't seen or has going up against over and over again. That that'll be the true test. But so far, it's so good for him. Absolutely, and I mean, I think to what you were, uh, you know, what you were saying a second ago about those design runs. I mean, the design runs have to be in there. I, I hear it, it's 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 a really good sports debate. And I don't want to put bad faith on the part of everybody who makes this argument that. You know the, the 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 path to a Super Bowl is not a quarterback like that, a quarter, not a mobile quarterback, because there's a reference to that this hasn't happened yet. But I don't really think that it's a it's a fair comparison because a lot of non-mobile quarterbacks have taken a lot of L's too, and so it, it, the, there's also the fact that there ha there's not a if this was a poll, there wouldn't be enough respondents to even you know calculate any kind of results that would be reliable because how many of these kind of running quarterbacks have really gotten the, the types of opportunities. So you play with, you play to your player strengths. I think that there are numerous examples of quarterbacks who were mobile, who mobility helped them get all the way through the Super Bowl. You think about even somebody who's a controversial figure. Now, Mr. Aaron Rodgers, the, the Super Bowl he did win 
the legs were a big part of that. And it was the rollout. Maybe it's not scramble. Maybe it's rollout. Maybe it's, uh, you know, half roll that, that creates open opportunities on the backside. So I, I say all that to say, yes, everybody should expect that Kellen's going to draw some runs and he should be drawing some runs. If you don't use Jalen Hurts's legs, I mean, you're, it, it's mismanagement. Yeah. And I think there's, and it's funny you mentioned the rollouts because we've seen those as well too. You know, those have been part of the offense because I like, and I like those because you can run them really quick. You get them out, mm. you can roll them out of danger or, or pursue or pursuing a blitz and you can get it. it you, you split half the field. One, two, three. You can just look at your reads. One, two, three. Maybe you have four, and it's out. If not, decisive. Get it out. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's a. It's a it really is almost like another version of run pass option because those it three is. things, those options of that one, just run and take it up the field, and there you go. And, and I mean, you you can't really stop. I mean, you can stop it, of course. Like good defense, you can show up and read your keys and play with really good technique and things like that. That fine, yes, but. You can know if I'm calling a defense and I've called defense before, even you think, you know, a guy's doing, doing a boot and you, you can know that it's coming and guys just out technique you. It's one of those things. It's just like with the run pass, like you said, with the run pass option, I can know it's coming, but if the other team just executes well, it, it creates so many opportunities. I mean, and then you get a double move off of it. You you audible and keep an extra guy in if you see that another rusher is coming. So you can, uh, you know, keep an extra uh, keep a keep an extra blocker and then audible to give get a guy a double move. I mean, the guys will think that they know where the play is coming. Sure, you think you know, haha, and you know the <laughs> other guy's hitting his head on the goalpost. So for for. For what happened in previous years where we weren't using the boot, I'm so glad that it sounds like we're not going to be neglecting that. Yeah, no, it's 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 a, it reminds me of like if you took took some of Doug's stuff, took some because because the East Coast office is a variation of the West Coast office, it's got more of a tight ends involved, which fair to say that Kellen kind of is the East Coast that, that whole lineage thing is all fun. But you take mm. some of that stuff, <laughs> you take some of Shane's stuff. Yeah, and you just mix it together, and you, and you just add, and, and, and this is what the office looks like. Like literally, you'll see things that and we've seen it already in practice. There'll be stuff that we saw last year, and you're like, "Oh, I've seen this play before." But all of a sudden, you just have all the you just using all the eye candy and the pre snap stuff to try to throw the defensive throw the defense off. And it's like, "Well, this is just a simple wham!" But this is just a simple get get run yep. up the inside zone in the middle. But it's so much stuff to distract you, like we've seen. The Rams and everybody make do and Shanahan and everybody from that tree. It's pretty much the same stuff. But you just do that one too. So that's that's another big thing, and it's all fun part of the uh, the evolution of this offense. Yesterday, uh, Britton Covey had a really I enjoyed his press availability with you. I don't know if you got a chance to be there in person yesterday, but uh, he talked a lot about. Um, you know how he sees the game he made jokes about because his stature is not like dk metcalf so he doesn't really learn a lot from from that do you think this team's really i mean i'm, I'm glad to see brayton covey was a, a great special teams player making things happen is this team really going to keep six wide receivers though it's tough i could the the biggest thing is going to be we i think there's going to be an overload at cornerback defensive backs because there's so many young mm -hmm. guys there that they want to try to keep so i think you don't want to let these guys go for a team that's been starred for dbs yeah you don't want to let one assets. walk out yeah yeah they, they're, they're, they're they can turn to assets especially in the middle of the year when people start getting falling down or even say some eagles current eagles who on this roster falls down you want people that you feel comfortable with that knows the system so i think they're going to go a little heavier than past years defensive back it's the areas, the one area I could see them really going low is off the ball, maybe off the ball linebacker, maybe some. Mm -hmm. they don't, I don't think they keep four tight ends. So they just look at a wide receiver. Yep. I think that could be one where they keep, I think they can keep six. It's a little tough, but I think they keep six. And it could be one of those things early on where. Two tight ends, uh, well, Calcaterra, Cal, uh, Goddard, of course. Mm -hmm. Sharpie him in. <laughs> uh, stay up, you know, but but then we go to Calcaterra, no stole, try to cut back. You got, you got a oh, 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 Albert O. I don't want to disrespect Albert O. Okay. Albert O or, or an Uzuma, and that's the battle. I think if they do keep three, they you go with those two. 
could be one of those things where they do like Britain Covey they did last year, where maybe you cut a guy and keep him on a practice squad, and then you elevate him available for a couple games. You can't cut Britain Covey this time because everybody sees that and go, Absolutely. "Oh, he's available." We have probably done. He's gone. You're out. Yep. Yep. And you look at some of these other options. You go, Johnny Wilson. Can you find a? I don't think they cut him because they use a pick in there highly. Yeah. But also, you gotta find. You hope he finds a way on special teams to. To validate to to validate him being on the fifty three man uh, not fifty three but the game day roster little things like that is where you start to see the game plan. Who knows? Maybe they quote unquote cut Tanner McKee in a way to like you know listen, don't sign anywhere. We're gonna bring you back, but maybe you put him on the practice squad first and then elevate him until eventually add him more and make other moves or what have you trades, what have you stuff like that. So I think there's a way you can keep six. I think you need to keep six because it's gonna be tough. Yep. Maybe a nice Smith. Maybe he gets that. He, he, you know, he's he's still like he's working his way back from something. He, he doesn't look like himself yeah, so does. far. From like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So maybe you start him out like maybe they think you know what star IR. See, you put him you on know. PS. Somebody's gonna somebody's gonna snatch up a nice. Yeah, because so, I mean, he, he's a playmaker. He, yeah, he, like I don't know what he just looks off so far. I don't know what it is, but I don't, he, maybe because so much time he didn't practice and he's working his way back, but. I look at he. I think they still. Man, I, that's a fifth round pick. Can't just cut him. Cut him. It's fifth round. You, right. you use a fifth rounder on him. So I think it's one thing. Maybe he starts on IR if he gets hurt or they see to discover something. But something's something's off so far early. I mean, some is off though. Yeah. This is, this isn't funny business. I'm 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 being legit here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's like it's, it just looks like he's his returns. It, it's 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 often one in terms of like when him with catch the ball and returns because you know you, you drop the ball you're not going to get on the field. And especially yep. in that part of the game, and there's third, there's ways he's getting better, but some of the stuff he's doing and everything else, he's working with a lot of third team a lot. Uh, I don't know, but they are they get they may get creative some things, but I think that's a position I could I could see them going six of that position based on that stuff. Maybe maybe cross train Johnny at tight. I know they say that they don't want to do that, but that, <laughs> that gives you some positional flexibility. I mean, the man's huge. He's he doesn't even really need to hit the weights that much, really. They just get his blocking technique, inline blocking technique right. I like the way he gets I like the way he gets positional, the positional advantage. And you know, not only does he use size, he's a he rebounder. Knows how to, yeah, he knows <laughs> how to get into the area so that he can shield off the defensive back. So he's got a clear path, a clear target for the queen to throw. I like I really like what I've seen in that in terms of that, but maybe you go, you know, maybe you go to keep the other two tight ends or practice squad and elevate one depending on who you're playing. Maybe you do the bunch sets where you have Wilson along with, say, Smith and John Ross and mm-hmm. Paris Campbell, and you use it to you just use him to create block and create natural picks, and you were that way, right? In the red zone, you know, stuff like stuff like that there. But I think the main thing is going to be he has to show something in special teams because that's going to have yep. to justify him being on the act of the game day rosters, stuff like that. Absolutely. I mean, it's easy to justify Covey. Covey, Covey was getting it done. Yeah, Co- Covey was good. He's he's done well. He's done the way he's played. He's worn it looks to be the third receiver too. Does he get it? I don't. I that's what I'm it. hearing. That that's what you're seeing too. Yeah. The thing I want, you want to see is, especially when it comes to him, I want to see him. A well, it, he said Hurts trust him. I believe that. Well, Hurts be. I heard that. Yeah. In the middle, because you go to that crossing route. And you're trying to look through, you're trying to get those windows, and he's not the biggest guy coming across the middle. But if you first buy his time to look deep, I think he can be a threat in that term, in terms of that. But you, you hope he does that stuff. And, and uh, Paris Campbell, and John, I like John Ross a lot. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I see the speed, but yeah, I can see a move, uh, a movement to make get them to have to keep six. Is is que- uh, is? So see, I almost called him quit. Is he, is is? <laughs> Oh, shout out to uh, that was a real mistake. I'm not even playing with y'all listeners. I that, so is 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 John Ross catching with his hands? Yeah, he's, he's I, there's a good he had a couple good reps because he scares me with the body catching. I've been seeing uh, in the film, it's a lot of gather like a sixth grader, and I can't have that in the winter. <laughs> when you when he's running those short intermediate routes, yeah, I've, I've seen he he occasionally does the the let it come to you, but it hasn't been anything egregious. It hasn't been anything egregious yet. He's he's looked pretty solid. Him and Campbell look solid so far. I remember the one the one on one round he did uh, when they were coming around the uh, they were doing one on ones. DBs, I forget who's covering him. I, 
I don't know if it was Ringo. I don't know. If it, or I don't know if it was Ricks or what have you. But he ran the deep route and he looked good. He got to the corner flag route, called the ball in, two feet inside. Cause you know, I remember he ran front of like, okay, yeah, that was good. <laughs> so, so you mm-hmm. see that aspect of the game and you look and it's like, all right, cool. You, do, you can do something well. You really can. I just want to see him do it consistently. I just want to see him and be a threat on those deep balls to, to not just, A, run himself into double coverage and just veer off and pull the route off. Right. But consistently do that and make the big plays and make the catches so you can stretch the field and open up everything else right? and make him a threat when he's on the field. You got to respect it. So, yeah, I think there's, I think it's like if you go AJ, Devontae, Campbell, Ross, Covey, Smith, Wilson. But I think you could do Wilson, but then you put Smith on IR, like IR or something like that to start yeah. the season. Those are your six. And then you go from there to keep some other positions open. So like and it's all still very early. We can see what happens. Very, very Oh, early. absolutely. Yes. That, yes. That might, that might be a route they take. Yeah. If I, look, Johnny, if you were on my franchise, sir, I, you know, I respect that you want to get outside and I'm gonna get you some one-on-one looks, especially in the red zone. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, maybe even get you, you know, look like you're walking around the offensive line. Like you're going to start off as a tight end and then just let you go out and get the one-on-one, throw you a fade ball. But for the most of the time, man, on this team, I need to keep some of these, some of these running backs, um and some of these some of these playmakers so you might have to cross train but hey trip that's, trips that's right nice. have him in the the second the the most inside slot you run double slants on the outside with the, the with the middle slot receiver and the outside thing you have him run the wheel and you get position mm. oh well, yeah <laughs> oh, that's money that's money in that's a double money. slant you, you can run that all year yeah go up so in the second double slant once the first guy clears, the second guy can open Woo! up. They start to go away. Is there's it's so many options zone? to run it? And then on and the it, other side, you got the backside. So if you got like say there's AJ one on one on the backside, and he's got an option route and slant and go. It's it's so much stuff you can do with this all. Awesome stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Let me stop. Absolutely. So so, I, I'm hearing the rumblings of a QB two battle happening. Is that real? Nah, no, nah. nah. To me, not to me, not to me. Anyway, the only thing, Kit Pickett is the number two guy. He, you don't. It's gotta kind of be, kind of gotta he, be. They have to because you need somebody who's got starting experience in case Hurts goes gets nicked up or has to miss a play. You have to use them in there for that. So, I it, it, Tanner Key's doing good. It, basically, this is a point where, uh, and, and Will Greer, and Will Greer is just a player coach in a way. He's there to help. Install the system, help be the a voice in the in, in the QB room to help out there. So it's basically mm-hmm. they're still going the three quarter when you have the three quarterbacks. Pick it. You need to start. You have the starting experience, and you need them to do that. That's fine. Tanner McKee is good. If you if something happens with one of these teams and their quarterback goes down for the season, a la when Sam Bradford was traded, now all of a sudden you can get a second round pick, conditional first for Kenny Pickett because you got somebody who's desperate. Depending on your QB, uh, Ooh, depth that's mad desperate. But hey, keep it. Yeah. Let's just keep on going. <laughs> let me let me shut up. <laughs> well, 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 if you look at the quarterback position around the, the situation around the league, it's bad. Like once you get past 24, 25, 26, you can make cases for anybody from twenty seven to 34, 35, 30, 40 could probably see a, ga- a couple games or two on the field. Is that if Bryce uh-oh. Young keeps up what he was doing last season for Carolina? To your point, if I keep seeing what I was seeing from Bryce, I can't really make the argument that Kenny Pickett's not better than him. What we've seen oh. so far that there are reasons, and I'm not saying that he is, but we we see six more games of Bryce Young from last season. Yeah, you you might be right. Bryce is in a bad spot. Bryce Bryce is in a no one spot. I put that more in the organization. Because you got a guy who has talent, and yeah, Stroud, you know, Stroud versus Bryce Young. All right, cool. Yeah, it's to me. I still think Bryce Young was going to be the guy no matter what. He still has a lot of things to go. So Stroud's twenty twenty. If he has a lot of people, people, I still think people were taking Bryce before the draft. And I think Stroud was in a better situation. They're both one A one B in my book. Stroud's in a mm-hmm. better situation because you have a very good coach who's set up a very good culture. 
mm-hmm. and the offensive coordinators tailor stuff with it. When you look at Bryce Young, the owner's going playing, think he's playing mad to himself, going, I think we should play. I'm just I think it is a temper. It's just a whole other thing. That's Some of the play calls are just bad, <laughs> bad play calls. No, no, Some... no imagination to it, no creativity. And you're setting them up to just vanilla. I'm like, they must be just trying to fake them out. And they run, you know, QB delay on on third and six in the red zone. <laughs> That's not the spot. Yeah, it's it's they have some issues. You hope Canales can turn things over. And because I really think because I think if Bryce Young was in another situation, say he was in Miami, say he was in even Buffalo. Stuff like that, but we all know Josh Allen's not leaving. We know uh, two is not leaving. But save is in one of those with one of those teams, and he was starting. He would have been fine. This is never built anything around him. The system was bad. The organization is bad. So that's okay. why he was bad. Well, if somebody gets look, somebody gets desperate enough to give the Eagles a second round pick for Kenny Pickett, I'm I'm not going to argue with him. <laughs> I, I, I won't send him any hate mail. I promise. Um, before I let you in the in the folks the listeners get out of here um we'll do a little bit of over under 50 percent, 50.0 so <laughs> even if it's a close 50.0 no rounding people continue to speculate that justin simmons may still come to philly how real is that possibility over under over under i'm going under and i was under. really high I was really high, like extremely high. If you ask me this in June, I probably was just 60%, 70%. Cause I thought he'd fit so well. Only reason why I'm saying is under is right now as your backup safeties running with the second team, you got Avante Maddox and James Bradbury. And that's your backups. Mm-hmm. And you're looking for it. TJ Gardner Johnson, you got uh the and Reed Buckets are starting. I know the three with the three safety look like the big nickels something yeah. like that for you bring in a lot or what have you mm-hmm. but how often are you going to play that and would play how much playing time you're going to give simmons and would he be open to a significant decrease than what he was in denver because it's going to be tough to get right now with the roster it's, it's really tough to get him on the field i mean it's a nice spot like yeah if he's if he's okay with a reduced role yeah but i don't know how much it, is bradbury looking good at, at safety He's all right. Like you can tell, he's, he's still getting his reads. When he's back deep and covering like the quarters, you still tell he's getting his feel for that one. When certain coverages call for him to be closer to the line of scrimmage, yeah, he looks all right. He looks all right. He's still adjusting, but he still looks all right. Like when I saw, he almost picked off a pass a couple times when okay. I throwing a I want to say Saturday. Yeah, sa- yeah, Saturday's a uh, practice. Yeah, he almost picked off. Oh, Monday? No, Monday. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, he almost picked off a couple passes because. He saw read what the the route combination was. He was near the line of scrimmage. He jumped it because he knew he had support back there. So you see that. But it's it's when you're playing in space. I don't have I don't have any worries about yep. him coming up to try to cover the run. But also, once again, in Vic system, safety is the toughest position to play by far. So he's learning. He's trying to get the feel for it, and you do that. But I don't I don't know if Simmons is going to really ha- get the if opportunity. If Bradbury's on the team. Much. If Bradbury's on the team, it is hard. If you because if he if Bradbury's on the team, you gotta play him. You gotta get that money back on that investment. If they if Bradbury ends up getting moved, I do think that you can find some snaps for Simmons. But yeah, I, think, I would still go with your too. under. I think you're right. Yeah, it's and I, I really I really like his game. Really like his game, and I think he can do a lot. And, but to, yeah, just the way this current situation is, yeah, yeah, it's, it's tough to see it. I kind of see him as like a, at this point in his, his career, I kind of see him like an Isaiah Simmons kind of guy, linebacker slash safety kind of guy, like a Jabril Peppers, um, more so like a Kyle Duggar kind of guy. And uh, yeah, and and I'm also, I got to be honest, I'm not, I'm not high on Reed at the moment. So I feel like, Reed, Reed would if I'm you know if I'm Nick I gotta I gotta see a lot from from Reed, Reed look I'm gonna come to you look man we we go it's up to you whether number thirty one's coming over here that's go uh, <laughs> you know I can see it, especially with the Vangio loves to use a cover six look which means in the back on the back safety part two play Four. two guys are playing quarters coverage and somebody has the midfield mm-hmm. I think when you let 
CJ be the guy that goes down a little bit that has the goes in the man underneath, and you keep Reed to cover a half or a quarter, I'm fine with that. I really am. You get in the way to this guy stuff and you you manipulate mm-hmm. yourself. I'm, I'm okay it's with a that. nickel, like kind of like a nickel. Yeah. It's when you start to go man to man, like, hey, I want you to go down, go go in a slot because of the way to you have to rotate the with the coverage and you play a man to man, that's where you start to go like, all right, I want to see you know, I, I'm not feeling as comfortable with beforehand. So if you play him if you play him in to play that deep half or deep quarter, even thirds, they don't play that as much, but if you play thirds. I, I have no problem with him being back there. And he'll, he'll definitely help tackle. You let the team, you don't want your safety leading the team in tackles, but he did last year, so he can help out with the tackling as well, too. Chances over under that Isaiah Rogers gets the start at QB2 or CB2 over Quignon Mitchell. Oh, I think that's over. I think it's over. over. By, by a lot. I feel confident in saying that because. Quinion's been more because it, it's all a domino effect with Cooper DeGene having a hamstring injury, not practicing, and seeing they tested Quinion in the slot during a during a man, mini camp, and then I think they felt like, okay, you know what? Since DeGene's out, yeah, even after Banjo said we're going to keep him on the outside, start testing him in there more, and he's actually done all right for a guy who doesn't rarely play in the slot. He's doing, he's holding his own. He, he really playing so. I think as of now, when you start the season, I still say he goes in dime packages. I still think Avante is the nickel guy, the nickel. Mm. But you still get him on the field and dime, especially because you know teams play a lot, like three wide receivers. There's more four or five going on too. So you play on the inside, yeah. you still get him yeah. time to work and everything, and you allow Cooper to ramp back up again, and you don't have to rush him on the field to start the season. But yeah, I think and Isaiah Rogers is still playing well too. That battle is. That's a good battle going on right now. So I think you start with the CB2. I think Rodgers has a better shot as of now to start. Now, ask me halfway through the season, I think Quinn can be the guy. Mm. Chances that Shipley at the end of the season has more total touches this season than Gamewell. Under. The staff loves Under. Gamewell. The staff loves Gamewell. But I got to say, if I had this place, a guy who surprised me the most in campus been him, because I look at the way that I, I knew he was a – like, we we knew his return skills. We know his – but when you see it in person, his ability to get yards after the catch on a, on a simple swing or as a check down route, it looks it looks really good. Like, I – nobody – it's rare somebody runs 30 personnel, like the, like that old full house backfield. Like, they used to run with yep. the, when, when uh, Cam Newton was back there with the Panthers. They ran that yep. full house backfield. He got a three. I consider I it. Just not, not about using it as a main thing. We're gonna see twenty two. We're gonna see a lot of twenty two. I would, I would, I would do it. And, and, and Shipley and Saquon, yeah. I think it's more. I think Shipley. I think Saquon game will start, but if it's a passing down, yes. Maybe depending on the look, maybe that would too. I thought. I still think game well. They value they value game well a lot. He still, he still was their guy in the passing game last year. I think when he's not heavily used. As much as he is, he can be really good. With Saquon coming in now, I think you get a fresher game. Well, I think you get a better, you'll get more opportunities to utilize his skill set like you did in 2022, where he carried that team for a couple of playoff games. And at least offensively, he was the guy that was really looking good in that offense as a running back. So to start out with, I think game was that one. So I think Shipley is the under in terms of that. We have open practice this week. Uh, who do you think fans will get a pleasant surprise from? Who the guy that I think I'm seeing if we're looking back, see, I'm trying, I, I want to go offense because everybody that sees the all the defense is like, oh, okay, yeah, 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 we know the fans yeah. on that one. <sighs> I'm gonna go, nah, I'm not saying, but yeah, let me go deepest. I'll go deep and stick with that in the Kobe Dean, Dean, way, okay. Dean. And he's ramping himself a little bit better. He's playing a little bit better as things go along. You see him starting to get used to the the system and what is expected of him. I know Zach Bond has been getting a lot of starts, running with the first team a lot. Mm-hmm. And I still think there's still an outside chance. You start. I still think Dean is the guy they want, and Dean's the guy they're going to have. We'll know by week two because we'll know by the end of week two who's starting at that position. Mm-hmm. But I think Bond's still. 
even though he's played solid, very, pretty, pretty much solid to good at the middle linebacker spot, I think they still envision him as more as the outside, the guy who can rush and give you a different look. Maybe we see a three three five, something like that, where you got a mm-hmm. th- like it's, it's it's an odd man front look, but you use yep. gone on the outside and yep. the co- and especially, I don't know if they're going. It's a public practice, so they may not show as much. But when you see Nakobe blitzing, and Vic doesn't blitz that much, when the, when he's blitzed, is that a gap or the b gap? He's so really good. And he's really impacted. His acceleration he's, he's, he's is, is something else. I'm like, he goes from like, zero to sixty. <laughs> it's like, what, where was this last year? Like, I know he's hurt most of the time, but when they used it, well, it kind of goes with defensive coordinators. But the way he was utilized, it was really, really good. And so, I think if if they do show a blitz or two. And you see, like, oh, crap, he's actually looking good now, too. So I think that's a guy who I think fans will be real, pretty excited about when they see that, like, oh, we actually do have a decent linebacker, off the ball linebacker. All right, maybe that happens, too. Offensively, it's tough because I'm thinking of all these guys, and, like, we talked about all these guys, and, like, all right, cool, it's, they're good, and they got, they're so solid and deep at a lot of those positions. I'm like, okay, yeah, it's not going to be surprised. Everybody knows about them. So I think Dean's going to be the guy that, that this is a surprise him. I'll be watching uh, John Ross. I'll be there. I'll be I'll be watching for John Ross. I think I think that speed. I, I know people were down on Quez, and now everybody's saying speed doesn't ma- speed matters, folks. When you're trying to get Devonte open, you're trying to get AJ open, having Paris and and uh, and John Ross back there making that making that safety just come down a couple, you know, back up a couple. Um, yards or or look at you uh, extra second to make aj or a dallas or smitty get open it really does matter so i'm watching john ross good man i think so i think he'll he'll be exciting to watch man especially when they do if they do a slant or if they do any of the kickoff drills or whatever and you see them like returning stuff that man's fast you see him when he goes running like getting off the line that man's fast (laughs) so it'll it'll be fun to watch Well, thank you all so much for listening. It's always great to get to break it down. We will be getting more stuff out, uh, bringing on Chris again, of course, and another time and bringing you other insights from other great reporters in the city and outside the city, uh, including friends from NFL.com. So thank you so much for listening. Take care, Chris. uh, You can follow Chris. Let me make sure that I don't let you go without plugging Chris. It's C Franklin News, the universal handle anywhere. If for social media accounts that haven't been, or social media platforms that haven't been created yet, Chris already got it. It's C Franklin (laughs) News. So go ahead, get show him some love. Go subscribe to Philly uh, or NJ.com. What's the what's the digital subscription? Uh, if you go to nj.com slash eagles like at the bottom like they don't have a uh, links to subscriptions and stuff like that if you guys want to it'll be, it'll be cool and we got a lot of stuff like uh myself popper grover king still got a lot of stuff coming out too I, if anyone wants to say a plug for my, for my co-workers popper grover has a great piece coming out about merrill reese and how he became became the eagles uh play-by-play guy all the way through to him uh, getting into the hall and just stories from a lot of people, familiar names you may have heard for the past and present. It's, it's a really good piece. You got to check it out. Thank you all so much for listening. Take care. If you think about it in this offense, we've got AJ Smitty, Dallas, and Saquon. So your third receiver that's out there, he needs to be able to affect the game in ways other than just being ball centric, right? Because there's only so many footballs to go around. So I think that's why a lot of times, you know, in the past we've had Quez out there. He affects the game with his speed, right? Paris and John affect the game with their speed. I feel like my route running uh, and my ability with the ball is something similar. Uh, you can't just leave. You can't just leave me. You know, you, you got to be a threat in some way without needing the ball in your hand.